Oh my gosh. Wow. How, oh, Clegg? Bob Ross right there. <laughs> I done blowed her out. Hanging by her in. Just, I don't reckon. It's unfortunate. I got an eye. Yeah. Grab hold to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh. I drop it like it's hot. We got rain now. No. Is this a Godzilla? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. That's a ghost. Well, oh, she's no. going wild. They want me to lick them. Yeah. Okay. Snuffle all up, I guess. You as an OG. Yeah. Merv. Yeah, you like it, don't you? Rocky power. She's like, nope. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh. Scotch more. Am I right? Mike the neighbor had this. About on the ground. Get out of my face. <laughs> Screw it to it. <laughs> I ain't touching it. Having so bad, see. Heavy dicky ones right there. Easy, easy. <sighs> what? It's shiny. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, it. Protein <laughs> oil. Woo. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, son. Caddy Wampus. Oh. Looking good. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> Donk of a radiator. <laughs> False alarm. What are you doing? We're not doing that. Legs are getting moving. Scooty. Oh my goodness. Oh. Letterfly. Ooh. Literally perfect. Yeah, you like it? Okay. This is big. <laughs> Shirley. Bad accounts. You weren't even there yet. <laughs> the water. Oh. Oh. Man, I've got candy. Hi. Here she goes. Oh, Lord, here she goes. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh? Yeah, oh my gosh, you drunk gravel and everything in here. I hit the brakes too soon. <laughs> the first there, and then I went off and grabbed them again. Yeah. Oh, you grabbed them all right. Hey, despite the rapid speed that this thing came in at. We're going downhill. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. This motor is shot. You can see it's already steaming and we just started it up. I mean, oh. if you've watched our videos of driving this thing before, we drove it to two our shows, I think. Yeah. She's two a teacher. It is like driving a steam train. I mean, it is rolling. <laughs> Doesn't run good. And when it gets hot and you shut it off, the motor, like, as soon as you turn the key off, the motor, like, it stops because it's tight. If you've watched our channel for a while, this is our 71 International Metro Mite. Mom bought this thing with a locked up motor. It's got an inline six AMC engine. This is basically the forerunner to the 4.0 Jeep motor. And these are great engines, but I think this one got ran out of oil and locked up before we owned it. So definitely some issues there. If you remember, we tried to start it on 12 volts and failed. Never did get running. And then we tried it on 24 volts in another video and finally got the thing running, but uh, it just runs good enough to like lot drive is all it'll do. It used to be a postal vehicle. That's why it's right hand drive. And here and there you can see stuff on it that talks about the US mail service. I think the other side you can see it says zip code or something on that side, but they use it at a craft fair after that. That's why it has a funky paint job. We lowered it before. We did an axle flip front and rear on this thing. Gave her 10 degrees of caster in the front. See not the frame in the back. We got some old school bus seats. Gosh, it's gotta be two years ago now, probably, mm -hmm. right? And we eventually want to set up a school bus seats like this where we can ride a bunch of people in it. We also would like to use it kind of like as a merch vehicle at shows. Look, it's even got a bay door in the back. I mean, how cool is this? Where are you gonna get that? You can't, mm -mm. can you? No. no. Had to leave the dog chain on there. Apparently at some point it was somebody's anchor point for their uh, blue healer or whatever. But our plan in this video is to pull out the inline six and the three speed auto. And we're planning on putting a six liter LS, not even a four eight or five three. And we don't know what we're gonna have to do to make it fit. I know it's really close on this side, so I'm assuming we're gonna have to do some cutting and modifying to make it happen. We got a little rust on the floor, so it's probably not that big a deal if we modify something. I guess let's get right into it and tear into this thing. You're welcome, Mom. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I know you will be. You ready to work on it, Granny? <laughs> she's like omnipresent. You never know when she's gonna show up. She's always watching. Check out our hood latches. It's like so basic. You know how that works. That's 
So we got a junk radiator, a reservoir's junk, all that. But it's got a brand new brake system. It's got a town and country van mask cylinder that's manual. All new wheel cylinders and all that stuff. I think we're gonna have enough room to fit the LS in there. That's what you wanna see right there. <laughs> you can literally put your hand through the radiator. They just rolled it up and tried to pinch it off, but it, it was leaking really bad when we actually drove it. It does not look like this comes out at all. This is all welded to this, which is welded to this. So I do not think this comes out. We may end up having to cut this and then weld it back later. Yeah. We may have to. I'm not seeing any other way to do it. This, all this is welded solid. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Very weird. We might be able to bring it out for the door. Possibly. Lord, I don't think so. Look how long that engine is. I don't think that's gonna come out this way. Let's just start pulling bolts and cutting things and find Oh, out. Lord. Why don't uh, you guys take this radiator and this out? We're not gonna use either one of them, they're junk. So it's gonna have to get the shroud and everything at the same time, okay? Y'all okay. work on that and I'll work on things inside. Yeah. Yeah. This is like barely in here. What is this? You might can cut that hose, baby. Well, I'm not using it. If it's an old hose, we probably, probably won't care if you're cutting it. You're like, so... Yeah, just cut it. Because there's no favorite. I yeah, guess. they're super old anyway. They're hard as a rock anyway. I don't think we'll be using them. Oh, I don't get her done. You got your slides squeezed. Not all of them. Look at the junk in there. Ooh, is it nasty? Oh, it's nasty. That's weird. Oh, gas is pouring out of the ground. Did you do that or did I do that? I did it. Okay. I'm shaking the fuel line loose. It's okay as long as you did it. <laughs> I was surprised that we never had to put a fuel pump in this thing. Ooh, yeah, let's go down in there. It's really surprised us for a locked up engine. Yeah. We can keep like the battery cables, the carburetor and stuff. There's several good parts on it. Hey, I'm sure somebody could probably rebuild this thing if they needed one for something. So that's our throttle cable bracket. We might be able to reuse that thing. Yeah. I got all that loose, so all the fuel lines and throttle. Our battery cable should be able to go out with it. Not much to this, pretty simple system. Guys, it's a new year and a great time to work on yourself. And today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is a great way to get you there. I know for me, I've been trying to cut back on my work hours because I'm basically a workaholic. It's really hard to cut back on working when you get to do a job like this for a living. I know that's one of my goals this year is to spend more quality time with family not working. And maybe you have goals that you'd like to see happen this year that didn't quite happen last year. And connecting with a therapist through BetterHelp is a great way to do that. Maybe you'd like to be less angry with people. Maybe you'd like to be less stressed out. Maybe you've just been through some really hard stuff in your life and you'd like somebody to talk to. Well, BetterHelp is a great way to get in touch with a therapist that can help you attain some of these goals you'd like to achieve. They can help you set smart goals that are measurable and attainable and relevant to you that can set you up for success. Speaking with a therapist can help you with anger issues, stress, and any other challenges you may be dealing with. If you've got any age on you like I do, you'll know that life gives you heartache sometimes and stress. And stress can even mess your health up. I've personally seen that in my life. You can get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp by clicking my link in the description or pinned comment. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating. You can choose whether you want to do your therapy sessions through phone calls, video chat, or even messaging if that's what you're comfortable with. BetterHelp can match you with one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location. That gives you access to a wider range of expertise than what you might have in your local area. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire 
that asked you questions about what challenges you might be going through or what kind of therapist you would like. And then BetterHelp will match you with a therapist that can help you. In most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours, and then you can schedule your therapy session whenever's convenient for you. And if at some point you feel like your therapist is not a great fit, you can switch therapists, which is a click of a button. It's just as easy as that at no additional cost. Join over 4 million people that have used BetterHelp to live a happier, healthier life. Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash sleeperdude to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And clicking that link helps support our channel and gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so they can connect you with a therapist and see if it works for you. You can't work through everything alone. Big thank you to BetterHelp for helping our channel and sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to this build. Your Lincoln had a thing like that on it. Did it? Yeah. There's more bolts. Is there? There's definitely more bolts. On the other side. Yeah, there's two more back there. You don't have any coolant in it, does it? We drained this one for the winter, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, we drained this one for the winter. Yeah. <sighs> She's stuck on there. There you go. That one's off. This is still stuck on that. Barely. There. Uh, the fan's gonna be in your way with this shroud. I'm trying to take these bolts out. There's probably two more at the bottom too. Well, one good thing about this is it's all flat pieces of metal. Yeah. So if we have to cut something out, it's just putting a flat piece of metal back in. So yeah, that's true. We've already got a rusted out spot above the transmission here. Um, we've also got a 4L60E transmission is what we're planning on putting in here. You like my choke on the thing? <laughs> uh, those have been on there for like... I was going to say, those have been on there for over while. probably a year. Yeah, I drove it a lot with my foot. I push it on the throttle linkage with my foot to get it to go. Because it was just easier. Because that whole linkage system is really messed up and seized up. I guess I can cut the exhaust off this, huh? Yeah. Is this the right size ring? Exhaust is loose. I'm taking the charging wire off the alternator here. Did you get that one, Wall? Mm -hmm. What a deal. It's funny how this thing is. Look, that's the fuse block. Check out these old tags. 1972. There's the VIN plate. We actually have a tile for this thing, which is unusual for us. that thing leaking really bad look see where we had jb welded it up trying to make it work and look <laughs> the hole in the bottom of it look oh yeah mm, you don't want that in the radiator huh look, look how look how much is in there oh my gosh it's got this big like cast <laughs> aluminum say, like... radiator hose I'll keep that bad boy. That's pretty cool, actually. Isn't that neat? Yeah. This thing had a rear heat? Or is that, oh, I think that's a transmission cooler. I think I remember that. It has a transmission cooler on the side of the transmission. So, like, normally the transmission fluid comes to the front to get cooled. This one, the fluid stays in the back, and the heater hoses go to the back. Mm. So, we won't use any of that. If you want to cut those heater hoses out of there, yeah. Wall, you can just bring this whole mess out. You got one to cut up here on the engine and two to cut going towards the transmission. Oh, is that all right? Is that... I don't remember. Uh, I think we were wrapping the fan down like a towel. Oh. And that's why we did that. I need to take these starter wires loose. Hey, Dad, I leaked something. <laughs> yeah, I figured it out. She sprayed a leak. Cooling in it at some point. I got both of those. Yeah. I gotta take these wires loose because there are the starter wires and we'll have to reuse them with the LS motor. I'm gonna pull them off of here. Besides my car, I really like this one. This one's like top on the You like it? It's here. on the yeah. top of your list? It has to be one of my favorites, yeah. I really like how it looks now that it's lowered. It looks so good lowered. It does look really good. It's very low, which I like. I'm all about some lowered vehicles, so I've always lowered my stuff. So the black wire is the one that turns on the starter. And the blue one, I think, is the main power supply to all of this, which probably is like one blinker and one fuse or something, you know. Label your wires, guys. You know, I didn't always label my wires. 
and you, you learn those. You're, you're better off to just label them while you got them right here and you know what they went to. So I got the oil pressure gauge wire here, and this is the plus side of the coil here. I know we won't use it for that purpose, but we might use it for something else. We're probably gonna run this on Holly Terminator X because I'm really familiar with it and like how it works. Do we need to do some crazy intake or something, Marge? <laughs> I we don't should. know. I don't know. In here in the doghouse? In the doghouse. I feel like we should hide that it's a fast. fast Ooh, like a sleeper? Sleeper? Who builds those? They were super worried about these wires coming off. They put that on the <laughs> head bolt. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's got a metal strap around the head bolt to put the wires in place. And they really can't go anywhere anyway because the heater hose is in the way. So this came with a 196, a 232, a 304, a 345, or a 392. So ours has an X on 232. They put a 392 in these? Wow. Look, 392, and you could have got a manual transmission. That'd be cool. Talk about a hog leg. That'd be really cool. That's a hog leg. That's crazy. So you got the top fan strap bolts out, not the bottom, Ralphie? Yeah, I couldn't get to them. Hers is so good. She's not really that good sometimes. Her webs. Her webs. You can see how she acts in They don't really see how she acts. She's good. She's smart. That doesn't mean she's good. Hyper all the time. Eleanor, bring me that. That's not yours. That's mine. That's impressive. The amount of heater hose action. That's the first vehicle I've ever had where the coolant went to the transmission, not the transmission going to the coolant. Okay. There you go. That's the last bolt on that. Yeah, it took a beating. <laughs> the front side's worse than that. If you have an International Metro Mike grill for one of these, hit me up, cuz, because I don't have one. Do you see what it's hanging up on? Yeah, that's fine. We'll take the fan off. Very small water pump pulley. Right, we put a new belt on. We're gonna save that for sure. And it's got a brand new GM one wire alternator. And I actually bought this thinking we we're gonna have to adapt it. It was a direct fit because, like, you know, international and AMC just used whoever's stuff, you know. There's one of them ratchet straps we've been looking for. Yeah, you know, every now and then you got a fan hitting the shroud and you just need to fix it and you don't want to put water mounts in it. <laughs> the Falcons had the same ratchet straps on it for like. Shoot. Three years. Probably coming right? on three years now, right? Still working. Hadn't had any more trouble. Look at that. It still has a piece of the old belt. <laughs> we drove this thing for miles. Oh no. Look at that. It's a piece of the rusted old belt in. still rusted in there. Alright, let's get our motor mount bolts loose, guys. It has let's see it. Girl, that's a good one. That's fair. Bob Ross. Bob Ross right there. Who's the only Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> that's, that's probably high enough. Wild one. You need to go up one more pump, Ralph. <laughs> the frame rails on this thing are hilarious. It's basically railroad ties is all it is. It's <laughs> completely straight frame. There's no kick up or kick down or anything. Which we notched it in the back, but we have it up here. We, we think we have enough room. All right, the motor mount bolts are out. So our total width of our engine bay here is like 34 and a half inches, but we also have like a big piece of something here with a dash that's in our way. Let's see how wide our LS engine is. We haven't even measured yet. Oh my goodness. At least we put four engines in here after <laughs> we put this thing in here. The widest point is like the exhaust manifolds. It's like 27 and a half inches there. Oh. Fine. And you could you could tuck them in harder, you know, with headers. We may actually put headers on it. We don't know. Really, if you don't take into account the exhaust, you, 25, 26 inches, something like that. 
and the height on it is right now with this intake it's 32. i'm not really worried about the length because you know we can just keep going back with it dead center of this engine bay is the dead center of this engine so that makes sense and what we say like 26 maybe without the header yeah. issue so 26 half of that 13. so yeah we're gonna have to cut back on this side like five inches probably off of this unless the engine sits down lower than that it could actually sit lower than that yeah being an ls we're still trying to figure out how to get this thing out of here honestly i say don't slice this but slice this where it merges i don't see a way that it would come out the door easily i mean you might get out of there but the length on this thing and i definitely don't know how you drop the ls through that little hole there I feel like the LS has got to come through this way or something. You could drop it at the bottom, but you'd have to drop the whole front suspension at the same time. Yeah. You know how they do it at the factory? How? Huh. The body wasn't on the frame. Oh, yeah. They sit the, down on there, and then they sit the body over, which I do not want to pull the body off the frame. We'll figure something out. That would take forever. That's the old glass pack. Classic. Yeah, that's not the factory. Look where they welded all that. We better take that one back. I think the best welder is This is our speedometer cable. This is a cast iron transmission, automatic. That's unusual anymore, at least. Back in the day, it wasn't so unusual. Looks like they left a couple bolts out on the transmission mount. This thing has been swapped to a Ford 9 inch rear, and I don't think that's what it had from the factory. You can tell it's been pulled out of another vehicle, but I'm glad it got swapped to a Ford 9 inch. Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh. I forgot here. Alright, right, come out now. Messed up. Yeah. This has the strangest transmission setup. It has a yoke just like the pinion does on the rear axle. So it has U bolts and straps front and rear. Which, you know, might be normal to you guys, but definitely not normal to what I would normally work on. We got both the U bolt straps off. We should be able to pry this out. We definitely need to work on the rear axle as well so at some point during this because the rear casings are on the ground. Look at that. Ooh. It's got a lot of pinion slot. Ooh, I can't sloppy. believe it drove as good as it did. Right. Ralphie, I need a small pry bar, please. Oh, uh, that's a little too small, Ralphie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. This that's guy's perfect. so cool. Look at him. That's so weird how it has. I mean, it looks like you're looking at a pinion on a differential. I'm blowing the soot out of it right there. <laughs> Your car ain't got no soot in it. It's all blown oh, out. Oh, I done blowed her out. Can you see how far out that bolt is already? <laughs> and I haven't even touched it. Wow, that was the only thing holding the transmission. Hanging by a thread. Just, there's only one bolt down here too, it looks like. Wow. Uh, we can probably slide it off of that though. I'm gonna go ahead and take our new carburetor off here. This thing's worked nicely. I'm sure we'll throw it on something else at some point. Most of these one barrels are pretty universal. I put the same one barrel on like Ford inline sixes, AMC. We also put one on that flathead that was in that Rambler. Mm -hmm. So we put them on several different vehicles. They seem to fit whatever I put them on. Look at Mr. Ralphie. <laughs> Carry it proudly. <laughs> what else is left unhooked? Anything? I don't reckon. No, put the straps there. Even if we cut this out, the distance from like here to here does not appear to be enough oh, no. to get the engine out this direction. It's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. The yeah, only cool. chance we have of getting it out this way would be cutting this rusted floor out right here. Cause then you could move the engine back and up because it can't come straight up. The engine's too long to come straight up. Wait, that on screws by the way. What? It has screws. This comes up? And right there. Really? Right there. Well, maybe that's our answer, Ralphie. I got an eye. Ralphie got the eye for the screws. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> okay. Let's try that. Maybe it lifts up or something once you get that unbolted. Oh, it's rusted anyway. We have a fresh wash this Yes, we have. Uh, I, 
clean these out first this time. Okay. This is a comfy seat. <laughs> you got one over there? Is it turning? Don't strip it out. Nah, I can't. Yeah, this one's a Phillips. Look, Dad. I know it. It's moving in there. <laughs> I think we're going to have to cut the heads off these. That one's not doing anything, so we got, what, three? Let's just cut the heads off of them. Come on. What's holding it? Is, there, is it welded and bolted or something? I think it's just crusty. I don't see any more Boop. bolts. I don't get it. Let me cut that side and see what it does. That's so this side seems to be loose. So if we take these screws out, can we get the whole thing out in one piece? Think? This is a I think it's a possibility. Make sure you get in there again. Yeah, it's coming out. Okay. That'll help us if that'll work. Here, I'm going to stop. And then walk around out? It went a little and then started to spin. So. Okay. I'm this might out. save us here. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think. This might work. Well, I got the eye. Uh, I have the tire. Who else thinks that's probably the coolest steering wheel we own? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like the International Harbor for symbol in the middle and all that. Let's see what happens now. Yeah. Grab hold to it. This thing's like a darn Lego. Yeah. Snap together, don't it? Here. Well, that's very easy to. Look yeah. at there. What is on this one? Look, that, looky <laughs> there. That might have just saved us. Oh, look at that crazy transmission cooler I was talking about right there. You're welcome. Good job, Ralph. It'd been so much easier to unhook all this if. I oh, yeah, it. that's true. It has like vents for the bell housing. Some of the power glides have big holes for vents. If you remember, we spent like over 100 bucks trying to rebuild a starter, too, because nobody sold it. So now what's the plan? Pull the engine out of it. Out the door? Uh, yeah, out the door, yeah. Okay. Do you feel better now? I do. You feel better? Yeah. You was some pressure earlier, wasn't yeah, you? Yeah, I looked at it immediately, and I'm like, this may not come out of here. They may have built this van around this engine. They built that for this purpose, you know? Yeah. Like, it all unbolts. Luckily, the rest of the floor is in pretty good shape. Oh, that was not slow, Ralph. Not slow at all. Is it going to fit under it? Close down. Oh, maybe. It's going to have an LS, so it's going to have the same engine as our truck. Does it have the frame enough to haul? Look, it's got railroad ties, huh? You can't bend them. Okay, so we could haul cars to an event. And have merch in the back. The only thing that worried me about towing with it something heavy is it's a really short wheelbase, you know. But mom yeah. could drive it and y'all could follow in something else. Okay. I guess I'm just gonna bolt it right here to the intake and the coil bracket. The coil bracket goes right to the block though, so it's really stout. Look how nasty it looks down inside that intake. Look, Ellie thought that was a mouse. Oh, my God, oh she did, isn't it? Look, it's just solid Ew. rust in there. Thank you, sir, for that bolt and the song. spring on this side and the crossover on that side. That's unfortunate. <laughs> we could jack it up. Yeah, jack it up just a little bit. Is it gonna be right? Oh yeah. All right, see if he'll go in. I don't know how much it needs. We'll go now. Oh, there we go. 
that low life. If we can just take it on that chain, it'll be fine. Can I get in front of the car here? So... Turn the wheel to the right. Check it up a little. is big enough to carry this cast iron behemoth out of here. Don't tell what that thing weighs. All cast iron. Oh, oh wow. What was it? I don't know. I guess the stud. Oh yeah, it was a stud on the left. You got it clear if I keep going up? Dad. What if we go back? Yeah, go back. You go back. Pull it back. What's stopping us from going back for this? I think I'm not going to listen to that. Oh, that's chill. Don't fall. Hey, your old filter's on there. There you go. You pass, okay. You pass with your Will the transmission come up? Is it still hooked or something? No, it's come up. It's off the well, pick it up. See if you can pick it up on it's free. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Alright, we're hitting at the front. Look back on the wall. This far off the radiator up front because it's so long. You know what's really funny? It didn't keep any fluids out. <laughs> like, because it's got that built in yoke on the transmission. Yeah. Usually they dump a bunch of fluid out of the back of the transmission, but this mm -hmm. one didn't. Yeah. Ready? Slowly. Here we go. You can't let mom do this job right here at all. <laughs> I drop it like it's hot. Watch your hands. I wish we had a way to weigh that thing. There's no telling what that thing weighs. I would uh, dare say the LS is going to be lighter. You a, think so? Yeah, I think so because aluminum transmission case. Mm -hmm. You got aluminum cylinder heads, plastic intake. I mean, there's a lot of things that are lighter. These other okay. sixes aren't is that aren't lighter. Uh, yeah, all this thing. This whole thing's faster. I mean, on the LS. Oh yeah, it's it's an iron block LS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at all the room in there for activities. We got room now, boys. Yeah. That was extremely easy compared to past experiences. <laughs> and then all the space you have. I thought it was going to be terrible. I mean, we can cut whatever we need to cut out of here. It's all flat metal. Yeah. I wouldn't feel bad about it, that's for sure. Awesome. Good job, guys. Woo! Woo! We could move these in back. 
You know, we could do whatever we want to do. Will or she? Huh? Huh? Uh, I don't know. She, she wouldn't do any wheelies unless she put it away. But <laughs> She's too low to be doing wheelies. I don't think she's going to be doing any wheelies, but we're definitely going to have to do some sort of modification to transmission crossover. That thing, have you seen how big that thing is? I mean, I've never seen a crossover that's so <laughs> deep. Like, it goes down so far. I mean, this is like two feet from there. We're definitely probably going to shorten that up a bit. So we're putting this one in? No. no. That one. No. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. one? There's yeah. no way. Here, we gotta move this over out of the way. Here, pull that foam after the box out. I don't even realize that. I'm so behind. Where's she been doing? <laughs> Put this over there, guys. We gotta squeeze now. We don't, she's like a tugboat. Just tell her where you want it. Flip it over, Walt. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. All right, all right, here. It's so good. Oh, okay. Maybe we can get around that. Is this a Godzilla? Oh, no, no Godzilla. I can't afford no Godzilla. Wait, which is a Godzilla? It's not that big. It's just all the stuff on it. Yeah, we're going to strip it down before we even think about putting it. We actually have a transmission we gotta go get out of the barn. That'd uh, probably like be cool. this, this thing is like, like that's the hog way. Yeah, you Look ain't mine. I didn't even realize that this was the These way. with a camshaft, you can make like 450, 500 just with cam and valve springs. The parents can hit it. <laughs> we don't, we, I don't know about this one. Mom is gonna be ripping know, a ripping. chip. <laughs> get over here and get the wall, Mom. Oh, okay. Sorry. What just happened? Uh, what about broke the wall down, I think? <laughs> <laughs> Look. Keep it rolling. You can get it moving, just go. <laughs> we might get a hook a strap to it yeah. and pull it out with a tractor now. Yeah. Got big blue! Green, aren't you supposed to be in bed by now? Yeah. I thought old people went to bed early. She's like, well, she's old so people, nosy. she's looking around for old people. Like, hey, what y'all doing? Look at me out there. Oh, that's what you're doing. Is that the right width? Yeah. Good? All right, I'm gonna pull forward. You hook that to it, we'll pull it out of here. Today. At least we got that done today. I was really worried about how we were going to get that engine out. <laughs> I'm still a little worried about getting this engine in there, honestly. But I think we can get it through the door. But that's going to be all for tonight. We're froze to death. We got to go get the transmission out of the barn in the morning and stick this thing down there and start figuring out about mounts. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. It'll go forever. It goes all the way up. Okay. I've never done that before. Look. Oh, that's a ghost. Okay. I, guess I won't sleep tonight. Bouncing and coming right. up. I want to try some. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right, for real, we're out. Woo! Lots of energy. Go. <laughs> Marcy.
merchandise available at thesleeperdude.com. We got hats, we got hoodies, stickers, shirts, a lot of good jazz. You can check out our second channel at sleeperdude2. Check out our third channel at sleeperdude armed. And check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at sleeperdude88. Woo! Next morning, we're all cold. But we're going to go ahead and strip this engine down. I was gonna go get the transmission first thing this morning, but it rained all night long. So it's a muddy mess out there. So we're gonna let it dry as much as we can while we take this apart and it's gonna be exactly the same wetness out there when we get done with this. We can take the air box off, the intake, the exhaust manifolds, all the wiring harness. If the motorhome project has taught you anything, I'm not going to use this harness. I guess we should unstrap it from the pallet, huh? Hey, I got one of my ratchet. I was gonna say, what did that come with it? I think that came with it, man. He's probably watching this video thinking, wiggly. that's that ratchet I've been looking for. All right, she wiggly wobbly now. That's fair. Yeah, that's a jar All right, you take your pocket knife. Where's your pocket knife? Uh, I don't have mine on me. That's a problem. Let's go. You pop this guy up. So that's like a lock to make sure it doesn't come unplugged. Push the black part in and then it comes out. Right. Okay. Well, pretty easy. Oh, fully. Yeah, that's, that's what you want to see right there. Oil all in it. Yeah. That way you know it's not ran out of oil. All that is? I don't think we'll be using this, but we'll keep it just in case. The ma this is a mass air sensor. Hey, you should recognize this. It's a dipstick. <laughs> we can make it even much smaller. That is a transmission cooler, but there's no transmission on here. But that's how you want your flex plate to be too. You want it to be loose on there. That way it can line itself up. Oh wow. Somebody cut that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, it don't look like we have a complete harness anyway, do we? Mm, no. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> it measures the massive air <laughs> in the engine. Hey, don't get besides that grill gonna get oh, right over. No, I'm just I think this came out of a Yukon Denali, I believe. Denali. Take this yeah, let's take it all off. Right here. All right, well, what is that? Anything that's not mandatory, we need to get it off there. No one needs plastic. This is a 10 millimeter, I think, Ralphie. Give us an 8 and a 10. Yeah. You're coming up. Yeah. It's all. It's just. It's a bolt down. It's just a bolt down. There we go. Just for sound purposes only. You want me to take the intake off? Yeah, I want to take the whole into it's an eight millimeter. Okay. Wait, what's going on this side? Are you gonna leave one? Yeah, they they stay in it. This off the trail? Uh yeah. Well oh! is it bolt to the intake? Yeah, right here. You should be alright. It should be able to stay on there. Okay. We're at the unplug on this wall. Put a 13 on that. I need that. What are you? Wait, what is she? She's just going unscrewing anything. What are you unscrewing? I'm not unscrewing everything. We don't have to take that one. Oh, Put that back. Oh, oh wait. She's <laughs> looking up. I'm just like, She's no, going I'm wild. Thing oh, here. Some random things. No, we crazy. don't need to take that off. Hold on a sec. I did not. Hey, where'd that go? Actually. Yeah, actually, find it. I saw the madness happening. I know. She's just ripping and going. Crunchy. Somebody's already broke or popped with an air conditioning. What is this? What? Oh, if you get the clip tool pliers, you can just pry that out of there. We've already got three broken exhaust manifolds. Oh, that got the same takeoff. I think I got one more. Has he got the longest extension? I think I need a long one. <laughs> Okay, that might be all besides sensors. You want to help me close? We just have to get LS swap headers for a 71 Metro mile. I'm sure they make that. Mm. You can unplug your cool packs here. You can leave all these small plugs plugged in. So I unplugged the whole bank. They just slice through that. This has got drive by wire for body. Uh, can we just dipsticks in my way. Sure, I'll take these ones. Is that your new favorite tool? Yes. It definitely is. 
I'm gonna need to get a bag. Why See, I don't want it. Why does it have a plastic intake? Wait. The all the LS has had a plastic intake. It saves on weight. Also, it doesn't absorb heat like aluminum does. Two snapped off here. We might be able to use those exhaust nut folds, but to get it through the door, I'd rather just have as few things as possible on this engine. Things ready? Yeah, well, here you never took loose. Oh. Well, always good to have a bolt in there. Yeah, right there. It just gives you confidence. The very last one. So we're just taking random things off, or? No, we're taking <laughs> the harness out of the way. Alright, let's see if we'll go up. Hey, I succeeded. What's this right look, here? Look, right here. This hose. And that one right there. Hard as a rock, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you give it the twist. That's, that's the key, the twist. Did you got clamps right there? Yeah, it's got those squeezy ones. Where's this going, Walt? We need to follow this down here. Alright, we got a bolt here, boy. Well, 13. Yeah. yeah, we gotta put a chop top cam in this thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. We'll probably do cam valve springs, possibly an intake and headers. Ralph wants me to turbo it, but. It is. You gotta turbo everything. If you're gonna turbo it, you probably need to put a built transmission in it then. Yeah. Or a 480 E. I just wanted to make it a cool cruiser, do a car show, sell merch. Go to the post office, you know. It would probably still be really fast. You could probably click cruise control and it'll drive to the post office. It's probably. It's vehicle. I got that one. Well, this one's still the hooked. The clamps are hooked, but it's, and then there's that one. It's all oh, It's just up in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, Here's that. Oh, man, that's dirty under there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. All the way down the intake ports. That's. Oh, that's a good time. No, I feel bad. The ground way under here. Yeah. Ellie, are you ready to work this morning? Of course, she's definitely ready If you show Scooter attention, he thinks they want me to lick them. Yeah. Okay. That's what he, his love language no is kisses. giving you a little kiss. I sit down. <laughs> Ellie. He's too scared to be out here right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is your crank sensor. It's hidden behind the uh, starter. And there's like a gray one and a black one. I'm thinking the black one was the Gen 3 and the gray one was Gen 4. At some point they changed from a 24 tooth reluctor wheel to a 48 tooth reluctor wheel. And they changed the crank sensors as well at that same time and the cam sensors. Some of them have cam sensors at the back. Some of them have cam sensors at the front, depending on the generation. Same thing with knock sensors. The earlier ones had the knock sensors under here, which looks like what we have. The later ones, I think they had the knock sensors on the side of the block. There's transition years, which is probably what we got here, where it has a little bit of both. Maybe at some point we'll figure out exactly what it is. It looks like the wires go up under the crank and around here to the air conditioning and the starter. Ralph is gonna take our AC compressor off. Here, take this one loose here. We'll pull the compressor off. There may be a, there's probably a hidden bolt behind that. Now, see that hidden bolt? We may put air on it at some point, I don't know. I thought about putting a rooftop AC in it like the motorhome has. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Then we just have to have a generator going though to run it, so no problem. This is your low oil level sensor here. So if your light comes on saying you're low on oil, that's what's doing it. Ralphie's done took the alternator off the inline six over there. <laughs> it is a brand new GM1 wire. Right, there you go. You can let off. That belt roached. So. <laughs> Crack me up when you say roached. It is. Look at it. We're going to have to pick the engine up to even get these wires out. All this can like lay over now over here. The bolts are it. Yeah, they, they, they're captive, I believe. We might need to take a vacuum for that. Yeah, we're going to. Wait, is those the cathedral things? Yeah, they're cathedral port, yes. So we just gotta get these wires up underneath here, but they're like underneath the wool pan right now. Do you want me to take this hose off? Hey. Yes, take that hose off. It's ridiculously long. We can probably use it, but we don't need it in our way. It's like it's like an elephant, really. I was gonna say it's like a snuffle up, I guess. Yeah. These back two here are stripped out. 
already or broke off or whatever. Ooh, that was up. I had to put any pressure on it and it broke. Why didn't it do that? I don't know. You tell me, Mark. I seen it happening. I know. You were a witness. At least my fourth LS swap, because I've done some for other people, will help other people. You as an OG LS swapper. Uh, I'm not really, I wasn't super early. You was pretty early. Pretty early, it's been. I don't know, I have to look back, what, seven years ago, something like that? I was making my own wiring harnesses and using a micro squirt computer, which is like the size of my uh, groove wallet. It's, that's, it's tiny, little computer. It's a computer designed to run four cylinders at max. And the way I got it to run was using waste spark and bank firing the injectors. So I would fire four injectors, four injectors, four injectors, four injectors, and then firing two cylinder spark plugs at a time is how I got it to run. You smarty boy. No, I didn't come up with it. I just followed other people's plan, like Sloth and Kenny. I didn't come up with that. Yeah, it's like the perfect size for it. That's just junk that was sitting on the intake that fell down. Where do you think that goes? There's some type of bracket or something. There's no hook for it. So this is your knock sensors. We will not be using them. Basically, if you're running on 87 octane all the time, you're pulling your double wide trailer behind it up a hill in 120 degrees and then she spark knocks it pulls timing back to keep from hurting the engine. We got it. We're not going to hurt the engine. Right here. That's your knock sensor? Yeah. <laughs> got two of them. Right here. <laughs> right. You can't even see those headphones. They're so stuck in mud. We're not gonna have power steering either. We may or may not use this alternator bracket, it just depends on room. That's the nice thing about these LS motors. You can buy an alternator bracket to put it here, there, there, here, wherever you want it. All these 15 millimeters that go into the block and heads, take them out. Okay. What's on those now? Oh, it's this back one over here. Here, take this one out. There you go. That gives us a better view of this. This is our oil cooler here, which we will block off. That's probably about all, isn't there? I mean, yeah. I want to keep the motor mounts on there because we may use them. Right. Old plug wires like this get so stuck. That's ruined. I even gave it a twist. I will get the tractor. Pick this up and y'all can pull all this out from under it, okay? Yeah. 
I was gonna set it outside, and I'm such a softy. Ah. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I already had him getting a trash bag to cover it up, but we'll probably throw this thing on Facebook Marketplace and give somebody a deal on it. I would definitely think it's a rebuildable engine, and you know, it, I know it's a good transmission. So, not sure how many people in the world still want one of these, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. All right, we need to go get our transmission if Rocky still got it categorized out there for us. Tito, he's killing out here. You gotta give them a treat so they stay away from the tractor. They're so nosy. Is that good, Rocky? Huh? Is that good, Nick? The day we got the F-350, we got this transmission, me and mom. Oh. So, the guy with the golf cart, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we're gonna rebuild this one or if we're gonna build another one and just swap this out for a core, but yeah, I bought this just so we'd have a way to put all this together and make our mounts and stuff. All right. You got it? Yeah. Light work. I'm glad Rocky kept this in order for me. Look, <laughs> perfect. Light work. Murph! Hi! You see the tractor? Huh? You gotta stay away from it. Come on. He really wanted the tractor. He was for sure thinking he could ride on it. <laughs> so much bigger than all he's the goats. Like, he's like as big as Ellen one. <laughs> is he eating the goat feed too? Yes. Oh my gosh. It is it good snacks? Yeah, you like it, don't you? use that tractor now i'm like how did we ever do i it? know i was telling ralphie earlier it saves our back so much we were all the time moving the engines and transmission yeah. and like struggling <laughs> I mean, all the time so i love that thing i'm very grateful for my tractor i mean your tractor honey. exactly well we need to probably drain the water this thing just so we don't spill a bunch doing this it's just bolts so you want to see it you don't even have teeth. How are you going to eat a bowl if you don't have teeth? You need to go hang out with your boyfriend, Rocky. Was Murphy being a good goat today? Oh, he was all over the place. That's wild. So if you're not familiar with the LS architecture, which I don't know how you wouldn't be at this point. It's been out so long. These things started back in like 98, I think, in the Corvette, something like that. It's totally new design for the small block Chevy, so nothing interchanges at all. The cylinder heads is a huge upgrade from the old small block Chevy cylinder heads. These have six bolt main caps, all your intake gaskets and everything. It's all O-ring seal. The intake is dry, so it has no coolant passages in it. They have a bigger cam bore, which allows you to go with uh, bigger cam shafts. Very strong block, crank, all that. Lots of guys making over a thousand on a stock one like this. Modified guys making two, three thousand horsepower. So they're really great engines. They make a lot of power for their size and they're plentiful for truck engines. That's why a lot of people go with them, man. It's hard to beat an LS engine. What is this thing she does? Is this my ears itch or what? I don't know. But she won't let you mess with her ears. No. Tosh tries to like clean her ears out. And she's like, nope, <laughs> nope, not gonna happen. Oh, that's a pretty smile. Look at that. Is it going to fit through the door, Robbie? Yes, it's going to fit through the door. You give us a pre measurement there. Here. Give us a width. No, no. <laughs> check the width this way and check that door. I mean, this is a V versus an inline. Yeah. We're right there. About 23 inches. Uh, I thought we got that. Got yeah, that. It's 27. 27. Man, we can put a big block in it. I'm so tempted to move the engine back. Why? Just because weight transfer. Are we not going to put the transmission? Yeah, we're going to put the transmission on. We're going to drain the oil out real quick. Somebody's running, what is that, Super Tank oil filter? Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, that's a little. Well, I don't see a bunch of water or anything. That's a good sign. Lean it back with the cranky diggle dandy there. I don't see anything that scares me there. Oh, my finger was in there. Okay. Wow. 
man. This had a 4L60E behind it. You can tell because it has three bolts here. Uh, 4L80E has six around there. And the 4L80E flex plate doesn't have the step out. It's just a flat flex plate. We'll probably torque those a spec later. Yeah, tilt the back flat. We'll put the transmission on it now. We don't need this narrow now because we're just mopping it up. Donuts! It's the donut, look at that. Every time. Just trying to build a pan. Right. Let's bring it over here. Ooh, that worked good, didn't it? Yeah. Oh we're gonna lower that down. Yeah, we will. Ooh. She's been scratching on that as well. Oh, uh, I bet. <laughs> Look, you act like I keep these bolts around for nothing, Marge. <laughs> Look, they come in handy when you don't have bell housing bolts and stuff. You gotta keep this stuff. She Wait, reverse. Does here. she have a reverse? <laughs> no. Excuse us. Go. It follows us every step. I'm trying to drain everything I can. I don't want to make a mess in here more than I normally do. You're almost on the downs. I need to go up. Okay. It goes, yeah, right there. I think you just need to go forward. Just let him get a bolt in it. We'll, we'll probably put a stall torque converter in it when we actually final install it. We gotta figure out exactly what cam and intake and all that before you pick a converter. Are we putting it in there? Yes. I'm, my brain on this project has what not What did you think we were going to put in the... Oh, no, I thought we were going to, like, you know... Do things to it? Yeah. We're going to, but this is... we got to make engine mounts, transmission mounts, stuff like that. We're going to make sure it actually works. And, yeah, we want to make sure it fits sure in the vehicle. Make sure it fits to the door. <laughs> that would be good, too, before we do all that stuff. I think we should put it in the transmission mode. That's my plan. Is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What? I don't know where I've been. I don't know. I guess we're just having to like pick it up on what you're talking about. Oh, oh, oh. Through the door. Feels so weird. Oh, it's going to go in there. So we're going to have to nose the transmission down underneath the floor. Okay? Do we need to tilt it? Tilt it. Probably need to tilt it, yeah. Oh, don't get under it. It might be easier for Wa to crank that down. Well, I'm trying to crank it, crank it. You need to turn it back your way, yeah. Okay, now we're If we can get this fast, then we can Yeah, when you get it fast here, we can turn it. Really? This is the weirdest way to turn it. Oh. If I go down with the whole thing, what's going to the floor? No. Okay. Here we go then. Going down. Wait, don't hit the oil pan. It's about as far as I can go without okay. where our oil pan's about here. Okay, I think I can push this over here. Yeah. There we go. Well, right now, I can go down a little farther. Yes, Well, no, no, no. You're, you're going to have to go back up. Man. What? Well, not... Push it around. Push it. Just push it. Don't get your hands up on this. There you go. Now it's moving. Oh, oh, it's looking so cool. I'm going to stop. Away. Like pull the transmission towards Ralph. Yeah. Wow, what are you cranking? I'm cranking this other off the other direction. Oh! It can't go the other direction, yeah. Oh man, we can go super far. Oh, um, hold on, hold your on. motor mounts are on this piece of metal, yeah, but this over? just a skosh more. Yeah, there you go. Well, a little bit more. There is no little bit more. Well, it just got to get under it. Or, okay. We're gonna have to get one side under and then move the other one. Yeah. It's against this one. Oh, let's go down as far as we can here. Okay. And go your way, you get all now? Yeah. They're not falling. Bring it back a little bit farther. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Go on back with it. Yeah? You can. Really? Every time I say back, he repeats it. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The sensor is probably about to hit. The spark, yeah. we're, on, we're, we're about to be on the spark plug. Off. Okay, this side we got a sensor. If, if it could come back. We need a slice of knife. Hold if on. If you could slide the transmission back or forward. That, that'll pick up. Just pull the spark plug out. Oh, that's smart. It does 
does have we, we definitely are probably going to trim this though anyway. It does have extremely big intake ports. Yeah. Compared to... Well, if you saw a LS3 or the new LT motors, they're even bigger. What? Yeah. Or remember that Godzilla yeah, motor? Yeah, Godzilla's like, I can almost put my hand in there. This is probably going to have to get pinned. Like, we got the sensor. This is about to probably break. You got this. Pull the engine your way. We'll just be in this back for now until we figure out what we're going to do. I should be able to go down now, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go slow. Don't smash your foot. Oh. Scared me. Your motor mount's hitting right here. What's hitting on your side? The transmission that's pans on the cross member. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you, know, so you, can, you can push it over this way. Yeah, you can come over our way. Nothing's hitting on yeah, our side. On side. <coughs> Man, that was really going out, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if she was throwing up or, I know. <laughs> or what. Okay, that ain't going nowhere. It's not wanting to go at all? No. But what's it hitting? I think if you had a jack on the bottom of it picked it up, I think you might can move it better. Well, I'm going to pick it up on the front, see if y'all can move the transmission over my way. Well, mine's got a cross in there now. There we go. Are we going to leave it this far back? It's hitting though. It must be. There's something. There's a the metal. Right? There's a metal plate. Remember that six up. Oh, uh, there's a a bracket. I think this engine is meant to be this far back. <laughs> I think we just shook. <laughs> Once you've seen it like this, you can't unsee it. Yeah, like we got the room. So we're almost centered there. Really, the engine's what's off center so bad. All that sheet metal there is in our way. But the front of the engine needs to go that way. That's better. We should be able to go farther the more I let down the thing. Uh, is it getting more towards center there? Mm-hmm. It's sitting on something. Yeah, we'll figure out what later. What is it sitting on? Is it sitting on the is leg? Is it sitting on the jack? I don't see it sitting on nothing. What's holding it up here? And look, the front is tight. I think it's just a transition cross in there. Okay. Is it supposed to set on those thingies right there? These, yeah, that's the original motor mount. I think we should leave it this far back. <laughs> the only thing is, like, this is flat here, though. Remember, it's like not a doghouse like that. What you mean to say is, this was flat here. <laughs> it was. We can easily, <laughs> can easily uh, is strong. It would definitely help its handling and traction characteristics. Yeah. If it was this far back or farther back than this. Yeah. It's pretty easy to make a doghouse, I'd say. Make a flat, flat sheet and just make that it That is just flat. Look at it. It's like a floor. Yeah, it was to put your mail on. We could probably. You, you could probably, like, replicate that. We could probably make it, like, it. the same thing and just make it. More off. farther back. I don't know. They're very good accountability no, partners. He's terrible. I'm telling Wait. you. <laughs> it talks me into all kinds of things. Wait. Especially candy. We could just make it go I up. Say, I say, I say. Then what are you going to do? You're going to have all that up there looking like. Hey, it'd be funny. Yeah. Ridiculous. It would be hey, just, put, just put the radiator there. It would be so it's funny. Because like, if you went to shows and you like had the hood popped open, and people would be like, well, where's the engine? And they like, walk around and sit in here and be hilarious. Well, it gives you plenty of room for turbos up there if you wanted them. Am I right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Look, we can make this all one piece and it be removable. If you want to do something to the engine, it would be a lot easier. You could drop the oil pan off the thing without pulling the engine. Yeah. You could rebuild the engine in the van if you needed to. The last thing in your way is right here, which is your steering arm. If somehow we ever blew up this, you know, which would never happen, mm. we'll it would be just, it, it would be easy just be able to take it out, or we could just literally break it down right in here and it wouldn't be like a yeah, big Yeah, instead order. of having to work with that, that, this the tiny, wide hood. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think we need to trim that back because really, I mean, what does that even do? Your pedals are over there. And I think it just matches up with the, the, dog the doghouse, so you just have to... But that doghouse ain't gonna work with this thing. Let's go eat lunch and think about it. We'll come back. We went to go to town and Mike the neighbor had this rack he was trying to give away. So we've got a rack for some of our books. <laughs> Ralphie's holding it with his hand on the way home. <laughs> yeah. All right. We always need some sort of shelves. We're back. I'm gonna have to try to take this bolt out now. <laughs> that I should have took out originally, but I thought, well, maybe we can use that transmission mount, but 
don't think there's any hope of that. Ugh. I think that bolt is bent now. Because this was sitting up straight, you remember? Yeah. Yep. Well, two seconds of that, and I figured out that I'm gonna have to cut these bolts. Apparently, I bent the bolts when I lowered the transmission down on top of that. Hmm. Ready to go back up for a minute. Well, got that out. So this gooped up thing. Look, this bolt was still in there, but the hole's so big in the cross mirror, this wasn't even grabbing anything. And this guy was bent. Yeah, it doesn't look like a usable transmission mount anyway, does it? Are you all paying us out on the ground? Hey, that's what you want. It's already too low, probably, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's try and look at the frame here and figure out the angle. So, about there is level. Oh, shoot, yeah. We may have to change oil pans just for ground clearance. So, this is designed to sit on shock towers and like hold the engine up if you're say changing the motor mount but you don't want to pull the engine or if you're mocking something up we used it when we did our big block fair once swap i think we can sit it here and hold the front of this engine up what do you think ralph yeah and if we can support the engine like this we can pull this engine hoist out which means we can lower the truck down and see how far the paint is off the ground <laughs> we're just running into each other aren't we? <laughs> this will kind of help us level it too won't it yeah i guess Let's see what happens when I let this down. Oh, we're good. We're golden. I don't know how stable that's going to be. Yeah, I can't. We'll see. Yeah, I can't. Okay. The farthest it can go is to the ground. Facts. Okay, right. I got to lower the front end down now. Woohoo! Okay, lower your transition down a little bit. I just don't want it to hit the floor pan. All right, I'm going to get down some more. Basically, y'all, let's swap now. Hold on. Look, the motor did that when I did it. You're like this far from the ground. Ooh, yeah. Are we more than three inches? Because <laughs> I think we've been three inches before. Yeah. Um, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to have to go with a shorter wool pan. Look down here. They make plenty of oil pans for these things, but that is the lowest point. Like the transmission pan is probably three inches higher up than that. And we're definitely gonna have to modify that cross member there. We're gonna cut it off probably and just do something totally different, it looks like. But we gotta figure out where we want this motor to go. Here, come here. Here's what I thought. This is pretty thick. Like Yeah, it's the frame. Yeah. I say go straight off of here and then tilt it up a little. Put a bolt through there, you'll be good. That was literally my plan. Okay, well, I'm just telling you that it lines up. We really got to find out the distance, though. Where are we going to sit it at? Right here. Mom wants to put it all the way forward like it was. I just like to keep things how they were. <laughs> well, we're not doing that either way. <laughs> it's an LS swap now. You need the engine to come this way some. It's not suited up. I love how you, when you step in this thing, it's like barely a step up to get it's in here. Perfect. It's dead centered? Absolutely. Leave it like that, for sure. Mmm. Would you have room for a seat and everything? Just think about the Econoline. The engine's literally beside you when you drive the Econoline. It's and set up this way. And the motorhome's close to it. Yeah, motorhome. I think we gotta go back with this thing. Yeah. The front of the crankshaft is, is just behind the drag link in the front. You have literally nothing under the engine. You could drop the pan if you had to. I love that. It would be really easy to work on if you had it on the lift. Yeah. Like with the old pan and stuff. Yes. Okay, well, screw it to it. We got to look into oil pan solutions here. I'd like to keep a rear sump. That way you don't have starvation issues on acceleration or anything. But we got to go shorter than what we are now for sure. We need to be probably three inches shorter so we're even with the transmission pan. Hmm, I like mm. it. If you put like a uh, LS1, LS2 style, LS6 intake on it, it would only be this tall. So you could build a doghouse right over the top of it 
and come back and step down here. Could you just move this back? Of well, course. you might. Yeah, a tall intake is probably gonna be out of the question unless you wanna build a doghouse that's up to here, which the factory doghouse was that high. It was this tall. Well, we probably need to come up with some sort of mount for the engine and figure out exactly where we're gonna set this thing. And then we can work off that. If we move it forward, you can see how close that pan is to the block. We're still gonna have clearance issues, even with the pan that flat, because that drag link goes up and down about four inches of suspension travel. Although we could go up higher with the engine, we're already like against the floor with the transmission back here. So I'm thinking at a minimum, we stay where we're at, so we're out of the drag link. I'm tempted to go back about three or four more inches personally. Without having to build anything here, we could go back about another three inches with it, something like that. Get as much weight in the middle. Will you need a drive shaft at all? Just you join it to the rear end? Okay. Well, it's gonna be pretty short, let's see. Oh my gosh, maybe look, like 30 inches? Look, there's the pinion there, and there's the transmission. Yeah, it's probably 30 something inches, like three feet, which we got a couple short drive shafts upstairs, I know. Maybe we should scoot it back. Scoot it back? Possible, yeah. Man, it's, look, look how low the engine is in the van. It's that's so hilarious. cool. But that's what you want. There's any chance of making this thing handle decently the lower and farther back we get the weight the better off it's going to be three more inches back this thing's going to be like a corvette the whole engine's behind the front axle <laughs> mom's scared already I guess. It'll handle it's like a we just gotta make sure and put a good solid seat in there with a harness for when you go autocrossing in this thing yeah. you know that would this be so cool. oh lord <laughs> it's gonna be turning over and everything oh no no we're we got it too low it, it can't flip it dragged the rockers for it flip now i think we need a sleep dude mercantile sticker Whoa, on it's on mercantile what are you talking about it's not merchantile. it's not mercantile yes it is it's I mercantile mercantile my whole life just because you caught it your whole life i'm gonna use right you your whole life. Life. what was the other thing it was mandarin or something mandarin mandarin oh wait there's been a lot of them there was one that was hilarious there's been I'm like tons sure of these words mean. that her friends have told her are wrong. She don't listen when we say they're wrong. Yeah. So she gets made fun of at school that <laughs> she was wrong. So I think there's been like Dunham's and Home Depot. Those are my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually thought as a child. Oh my gosh. As a child, yeah, last week. Yeah. Well, the way your mom talks, you, there was just no way around it, you know? There was no problem. So we've got a bracket under here that's straight above the transmission. I think it's for the factory emergency brake cable, which who keeps that stuff? I'm gonna cut it off because it'll give us about two more inches of room under here. There we go. It might be hot, Marge. I ain't touching it. <laughs> I'm gonna cover up the intake ports here because we don't want to drop nothing down in the engine. Squeeze is with her grandmother today. She likes to spend time with her grandparents, so we let her. Hopefully we can take this out now and put it wherever we want to. Okay, hold on right there. I love that it's right-hand drive too and the goofy little gauges and stuff. Oh yeah, it's, it's super cool. It is, I'm glad I talked to you in a bind. Oh, please. You ain't getting no credit for it. Okay, there you go. Wall, pick it up some more, please. All right, whoa, whoa, that's good. Let's go, let's go back a little. Just a little, just a skosh. Oh yeah. There we go. get your size 14s out of there. <laughs> About there is probably the legal limit on this. What? Here's what I'm thinking. Can we get it back far enough to put the factory doghouse on it in the front and just add to it back here? Maybe. You know? We should try well, we should sit the doghouse in there. And you might be able to bend that back down now. So, if we put it like here. <laughs> oh, I love it. You're killing right. me. Right. It needs to be more in the middle. That's, that's pretty good. Put this back where it was. Oh, wow. I'll do it alone. Okay. It's got pins that it slides onto. Yes, uh, a little, the small sledgehammer. Well, it goes back farther than I thought. We might could use it from here forward and then have to trim some here or something. Yeah. What do you think, Rob? I agree. 
<sighs> it does have a nice color to it, doesn't it? It does. Look before backing up. That's what it says up there too. So this is where they would put their mail, which I would clearly have at least one to two road atlases up here. Right oh, now, heaven so bad, see. Just think of all the uses this thing could have. I was hoping that this would sit down. I thought this was shorter than this in my head. All right, let's take it back off because that's just in the way. Oh, wait, that thing's heavy. It's so heavy. Is it level yet? Not at all. Needs to go farther? Yeah. That's probably good. Is that level or is that a little down? It's level. Ralphie, get in there and measure between the frame rails. Figure out what the middle is. And that's kind of where we want our crank bolt there. Yeah. I'm going to ratchet strap it over because I think it's too far to the, that side. Oh, wow. Ralphie, what is that? That's a All right, what are we up to the other frame rail, the flat part of the frame rail? Was it 30 and a half? So 15 and a quarter at the crank bolt would be centered up. Yeah, I need to go that way. Right, we'll hold this here. There you go. That's good. Right there? Yep. Well, why don't you get in there and take those engine mounts off the front. We may be able to slide them back and move them. Okay. Whoop, whoop. We're out from yeah. here. Can you? Can we come out? Yeah. yeah. It's heavy. It is heavy. <laughs> you can be your seat up here, huh? Good job, boss. It's some heavy dicky ones right there. Heavy dicky. I can't get under here because it's too low. If you can slide under and loop this around the transmission tail shaft, like a lasso. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it this way. To get... Pull on that lock a little bit. We need to move this about an inch my way. Easy, easy. <sighs> that was not easy, Law. I need to go your way now, Ralph, like another inch at least. A little bit more. Right about there, Ralphie. Will it sit there and stay? That's 15 and a quarter, isn't it? Yeah. Ish. All right, leave it there. Golly, you can't give Law the ratchet strap. She'll rip your ears off. Okay. That's centered up in there. It's hard to see it centered up because this metal in here metal is different. Here. It doesn't look centered, does it? So it kind of freaks me out every time I look at it. I'm like, eh. It's close to work and it's just the wrong angle, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe we can build it off of that somehow. I need to look at that rear end because people think that the rear trunk is dead center and usually they're not. And that's set up for like driveline angle things. Let me look at that in the back. So that chunk is pretty much center of the van i mean i'm sure it's offset a couple inches or something but i just wanted to make sure this rear axle wasn't way off the side because our drive shaft's going to be ultra short under here but like right there with that height the transmission pan's not lower than anything else so if we can get a shorter engine oil pan we should be pretty good with that kind of height there before i figure out the exact height we're going to mount this thing i want to see what our oil pan options are so this pan is nine inches deep and it's just a standard, you know, truck oil pan. You can see that the pan is only three and a half, four inches off the ground, which is doable, but I'd rather it not be that low. I don't want to knock it off of there. You still have an oil filter there that's going to be in the way, so you can only go up so high. And a Marge driving, it would definitely be. Oh yeah, it would be gone. <laughs> so I did some research. Our pan is 9.1 inches from the factory. And Holly makes a pan that is 5.4 inches. Mm. It's their low profile retrofit pan. I think we'll go with that option. It's still a rear sump pan, which I like. So that'll give us like 3.7 inches more space. I mean, even with stock pan, we're probably three inches off the ground. So that should put us at about seven inches off the ground. I mean, I'm good with that. Lord, our bumper's probably six inches off the ground, isn't it? Back here. <laughs> we're sitting pretty level. We're sitting kind of center. We need to start making some mounts. Guys, little ratchet traps like this are your friend when you're trying to mount something. Like if you want to stay at a certain spot and not move, I think I'm gonna come forward like maybe an inch. A little more. Right, right there would be just about perfect. We may have to look at water pump options because that upper hose right there just goes straight up to the moon. They make a bunch of different water pumps for these things. Really, we need that to come straight forward. Like if our thermostat housing went straight forward and so did that, that would be best case scenario for us. 
We're gonna have some long radiator hoses. We're gonna have to make them, is what we're gonna do. What? Rubber on the end, oh. metal in the middle. Oh, you know? okay. We might have a frunk in this. I thing. was gonna say, what are you gonna have up here? I don't know, just opportunities is what we have up here. <laughs> Put, hey, maybe you can make an oven out of it because you got a radiator here. Oh my gosh. You can make like a metal box, put your food in it when you want to heat it up. Oh no. I'm going to go ahead and pull the coil pack so we can set a level across this engine. I think it should be level considering how we have it chained, but I just want to double check before I weld anything. We should definitely throw it. We have the roof, we have the parts, and we have the gear. If the transmission isn't really I'll great to do it. I would just do Why it. not do it? The transmission would be fine if he'd stay out of it, but yeah. you know, when you get a turbo, you gotta hear that thing. Well, I was gonna use the stock truck motor mounts, but problem I've ran into is the mounts go down so far that they're actually below the frame rail. You basically have to make a bracket that comes back and around and up. I don't think that'd be very strong. Most of my cars I've ever built were solid mounted anyway, so I think we're just gonna bolt it straight to the block because that gives us more of a straight shot over to the frame. And if we did turbo it at some point or do something like that, it would make it easier as well being solid mounted. Here's our cheap oh even. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you got the turbo stash out. I mean, we need yeah. something responsive. That's the same turbo that's on the Super Coupe. It would easily work. Yeah, but that's too small for this motor. That's a T3. I mean, you could do it as twins. I should have said that. Yeah, that's a T4. See Will the... that work? <laughs> it's shiny. It could. It would be very responsive if you use that. And that would be good for autocross. It's a uh, it's 59 millimeter compressor. That would be a small turbo for a six liter, for sure. It is what a shiny mean? boy. They were on sale, you see? <laughs> what are you going to do? They were on sale. I think we should definitely use this one. We'll think about it. There ain't no thinking. It's doing. I'll set it right here for you to look at. These are 15 millimeter, if you're wondering. See how far down that moves everything? And that just puts us below the frame rail. So we should be able to use this as a pattern to make the plates. I wish I had the darn plates sitting here. I didn't have to make them. Well, me and Ralphie went digging. We got a couple of places here that we can probably use for transmission cross member mounting stuff. And we got enough thick plate to make our flanges for this. Thankfully, Squeeze is not here to find out that I pulled a piece out of her notebook. When your hands are this dirty, you can mark out the holes with your dirty thumb. No pencil needed. You have some pretty dirty fingers. Yeah. Oh. Hey. <laughs> So there's what we need to bolt for our engine. And mark where these holes need to be. Sure was nice of Mike to give us that shelf, huh? <laughs> okay, so that's invisible to the human eye. I can see them. Oh, they're there. They're there. They're there. Okay. So we need to cut out two of these. We should be able to do like one here, one there. Making it a little big will be better than making it too small. Sorry about your face. <laughs> Like, but gosh, oh. didn't it? If this one fits, we can use it as a pattern for the next one. So we're gonna make a little pilot hole here first. So the factory bolts are 10 millimeter, which is 0.384 diameter. So we're gonna go a little bit bigger to give us some wiggle room. So it's gonna go for 0.424, which is 7 sixteenths. I'm gonna give us a little bit of lubrication here. We're always needing sharp drill bits. We seem to never have any good ones. And that air drill gets her done. You like that air You'd drill? You'd already be done, honestly. <laughs> Give it the wobbles at the end, right? Yeah. I knew that was going towards my toes. Oh. As long as that fits our engine, we just need to make another one. Do you think it's gonna line up? Absolutely. You're overconfident. I'm right? never overconfident. It always works out in the end. Except for when it didn't. I don't remember any of those. You're like them guys that play the lottery. <laughs> you only remember the time that you won. Yeah. Well, Believe it or not, I must have guessed right because it fits. Yay. We're going to have to build something from there to there. I wonder if we can use these now. 
If I could do that and then a stand straight up to there. What do y'all think about that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, son. Okay, so we know what shape all this needs to be now. Wah has been playing with the auto punch and now she don't know where she put it. You're punching her. Oh my gosh. It's Here. so fun. It's like, oh, I want to well, Center it up. Wait, wait. Okay. Why is she holding it like First a dagger? Off, the approach <laughs> angle. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. The approach oh. angle is straight up and down, completely straight and completely yeah, centered in the hole. I'm like. <laughs> that's it. Dead center of the hole. That's a giant angle. I'm Ready? so nervous right now. Oh, that jiggled that my fun. fingers. I think I can do it better this way. Oh, that was definitely dead, dead center right there. Wait. Okay. You're definitely dead center. Awesome. Right there. Ellie's very interested in metal presentation. I'm not sure why she's so into it tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those little limp wrists. I think we got it. Gotta get them piggies out of the way quick. They match up with each other? Somewhat. All right, well, both of our plates fit, so we did something right today. All right, be good. Yeah, I will, I promise. Act good. Just because you're around Mike doesn't mean you have to act like him, okay? All right. She's going over to Mike's house because she's buds with mike's daughter so we're down to just me and ralph and mom tonight oh man you hit them with it, you? we put even more ratchet straps on it and moved it the inch here and inch there but basically this strap and that strap is twisting the motor level because it wasn't level so we're sitting level now we're centered in the frame rails and we're front and back the distance we want all because of ratchet straps which is my favorite tool to use when installing an engine the transmission's actually sitting on the engine stand right now. Give the seven and a half inches off the ground. I gave the engine just barely like half a degree more than what this is on the frame rail. So hopefully that's a pretty good spot to be at. We got a short mount and a long mount here. Either one of them will work. It's just, all it's gonna do is change the length of our little stubby bob here. What I'm thinking is we'll use the short one on the other side to give us extra clearance to get the starter off if we need to get the starter off. We'll use a long one on this side and it'll just make for a shorter little stub bob there. That's what I'm currently thinking. What do you guys think? Sounds like a plan to me. I'll probably move this one back as far as I can like this to give us room for the alternator because I'll probably do a low mount alternator. And is that gonna be okay with your exhaust or whatever? We'll find out in the future. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to tack her in place. Now I just need to make the upright piece. Looks like an inch and a half ought to be perfect. And if you're wondering how far we moved the engine back, I wish I would have measured the bell housing flange, but I didn't. This motor mount is two feet back from where it was before. So we moved the engine back about two feet. Wow. I was gonna use that like inch and a half square tubing, but I found this clamped in the chop saw and it's heavier wall and it's about twice as wide so we're going to use it. Oh, good. Just need a sleeper dude hoodie you don't have to worry about. <laughs> the hoodie's looking rough. Oh, it's so close, huh? There we go. Just a little push. That's all she needed. Right there should hold our engine in, huh? What do you think? Will that work? It looks great. Just repurposing what we have here. Profesh you know? right there. I'm probably gonna weld everything right now because I'll do that when we pull the engine back out, probably. And just in case we had to move something, it'd be really bad if we saw weld everything. Oh dang, son! You like that? Yeah. That'll hold it, won't it? Yeah, faux show. I was grinding this frame rail down the bare metal and the bottom of this, the other rail wasn't like this. This has got like a quarter inch of goop on it. I don't know. Ow! See that? Oh my goodness! It must have been leaking on this side because it just caked up with this stuff. 
Huh. You got your eyes on, Marge? Yep. Since this mount is shorter and it doesn't go all the way down the block, that should give us enough room to get the starter out easily. If we use the AC compressor, we should have room here too. And this guy is gonna be three and a half inches tall. The other one kicks up, so this one doesn't kick up. That's why they're different. You think I brought the glove with me over here? Oh no. I didn't again. You got a baby with you. That's gonna sit right. Like that, Marge. There you go, Pecos. Looking good. I'm happy with it. Still sitting level. It'll be comical to see how long the drive shaft is because this thing looks big when you look at it. And then when you actually see how long it is when you sit next to some other car. Yeah, it's short. If you move the Pinto back to where they're even, it's like the same length as the Pinto. So it's, it's just the height makes the it look, yeah. it kind of is an optical illusion. Right. You load it down slowly there. They're just tacked in place. Okay. I feel the front end going down. There you go. It's sitting in there. There you go. I guess we can take our ratchet straps off here, probably, since it's where it's going to be now. It was nice having a handle there. To, yeah, it helped out. Yeah. I'm getting so excited about it. It's gonna be so fun. To have like basically a Corvette engine in your Metro Might and basically mounted where a Corvette engine would be in a car this size, you know? And it's way back behind the front axle. Yeah, I'm oh. super excited about it. So as you know, the transmission is sitting on the engine hoist right now, which gives us a nice seven and a half inches off the ground. I'm gonna put this jack under here. I think it's not gonna be too bad to make this transmission cross where it doesn't look like. You can pull the engine hoist out. There you go. Our drive shaft's gonna be 22 inches long. Oh my goodness, the shortest drive shaft in the history of cars. 22 inches. How that, long was the Scarlet? It was longer than that. <laughs> I think it was 30 something. Here's our factory transmission cross member. And this is where our mount is back here. That's how far back we're moving this thing. Wow. Well, I think that's going to be the end of it for tonight. We got a lot of work done today, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, just yesterday, this thing was a driving six-cylinder vehicle. Now it's a non-running LS swap vehicle. <laughs> so look at all the progress we've made. Exactly. I didn't want to leave it hanging off the hydraulics because what happens is you leave it hanging from the engine hoist or a jack under it, and in the morning, everything, you know, moved on you. Caddy wampus. So I wanted to get it in here before we quit tonight. I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. And we gotta make a transmission cross member. Woo! Look at Scooter. Mom shaved him and he's like a peeled onion now. <laughs> you weren't down there today. Were you too scared? He's too scared to sit on the couch. She was hungry. Watching right Dr. Paul tonight. Of course, it's about him. Really feel quite at home here. All right, next day we got a full crew again. They're all out of vacation days now, so we should have them for the rest of this video. Look, check it out, girlies. Look at that. Looks good, Dad. Yeah. Welded in mounts and all for the engine. Let's get to making our transmission cross member now. It'd be good to be able to drive without a floor jack under the transmission. We need to get under the back of this, but it's too low to even get under there. So somehow we've got to support the transmission and still get the truck up in the air without throwing off the transmission angle and stuff. I wish all this came out in the middle. That would be nice. What guy made the decision to move it so far back that we can't even work on the transmission here? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Right right. Here? Go under the pan as far back as you can go. Can you hook it on something there? Oh, we got like, look, there's a lip on the frame rail. Hook it on that frame rail. Yeah. Mine's good. Oh, I saw it move. Do you see it move? I've seen it move. We just have to remeasure everything before we finish it. All right, you should be able to pull that small jack out now, Ralphie. While I'm jacking the back end up, we all get the measuring tape and figure out how big of a radiator we can fit and go to see what we got upstairs. Yeah. Gotcha. Squeeze you back on it this morning. Yep. Looking good. Sneak peek right there. Sneak peek. I'm going to go with 33 and a half I'll with the math. I'll go 35. Look. 35? Over there? No, no, no. Look, because this goes in farther. I know, I'll but. I'll say like 34. Okay, Where are you going with it? I gotta get a jack back here. Okay. <laughs>
Ooh. This is a low profile jack. It's still. What have you good. done? <laughs> I've made a beautiful automobile. We gotta put a tow hitch on this, so we. Ah, uh, if we can, that'd be go good. Up. I was gonna say. I got it. You found one? Yeah, it's 32. This one is 32, and it's hitting that guy, so it can't scoot over any. It's hitting the railroad track on that side. But if that would move, then we can do it. Where you am I hitting that? Look, right here, Dad. What is that? Yeah. That's the brake proportion valve. Can we move that up or something? This is the radiator out of the Malibu. Well, we'll be able to finagle it. I think we can make that work, yeah. Put a big fan on it and run our, we'll have to make our own hoses probably. Well, we have that behemoth in the We do, that's accurate. We might can make that guy work. We just have to move some stuff around a little bit. Maybe cut some little notches out for it. Good find. That should be enough radiator for it, for sure. Oh, that's about as high as we can go right there. Thank you, sir. That's gonna be an extremely short right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Less than two feet. Ooh, that's scary. So if we use this guy, we could put it across there. It probably honestly needs a rubber mount here. That way if the chassis flexes, we don't bust a case or something. I've ran them solid, solid before, so we might be able to get away with it. We might have one in the parts room. This is the gas tank actually here. Oh, is it? Which is empty and it has a drain plug. We've never been able to get it out. So we're definitely gonna have to make something that comes to the frame and comes down to this. I want to take this drive shaft loose because it's doing it's no good. It's only about twice as long as what we need. Yeah. Where is the soft part? Lay on. Yeah, a little more. A little more. Oh, oh, right there. All right, that's where we want to be. Just leave it there. Uh, I cannot break this one loose. I would say they're hard to get loose. Like this needs a bolt to the frame. It doesn't need to like weld to the frame because we need to be able to drop it out. So we need to make like some sort of l-shaped bracket and then we can drill holes in this and bolt it to it no minka can you break that loose if i hold it you gotta give it the hand hammer son Man, this is, it's probably good large <laughs> do we have a coral reef here what we got yeah something like that yeah it might slide out this way oh. There you go. So this big piece of angle iron here might work. It's not quite as long as I would like though. We may have to buy some metal for this situation. Cause we really need something like that to bolt to the frame that comes down another inch and a half or whatever to where we can weld it to that. And then we can drill two holes on each side. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's removable Yeah, we, just in case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can weld it in there solid, but you don't want that. So the only drive shaft we have left up here with the yoke is not the correct yoke. But this drive shaft that we plan on using for the Galaxy Wagon is the correct yoke. So it must be a GM drive shaft. So probably when we do the drive shaft for the Galaxy Wagon, we'll save this yoke and use it on this one and probably adapt it to this drive shaft and cut it about in half. So the drive shaft's actually gonna be about 18 and a half inches center to center. I've never had a vehicle with a drive shaft that short. I don't know if that creates a problem with harmonics being that short. We'll probably have to have our drive line angles dead on though for not to shake. So if you've had a drive shaft shorter than 18 inches, leave that in the comments below. Yeah, let us know. I'd really love to be able to reuse this transmission cross member, but the shape of it, because it's like U-shaped, in order to get it up high enough, you basically have to cut off all these mounting brackets. So if it was like shaped like, you know, square at the corners, we could just cut it down shorter, slide it up and yeah. put it in there, but we can't because of the shape of it. We'll probably just have to take that out completely. We are gonna have to get metal for this. I do not have what it takes. I'll probably get a rubber mount for this if I can get one locally. So we're gonna have to move on to something else until I get metal. Cause I have almost everything it takes, but not everything it takes to do it. I'm gonna. Try to see if this donk of a radiator has work. <laughs> oh, we're cooking with fire now. We can cut it down a little. 
It takes one person to hold the battery on and the other one to pull the trigger. This is like a Chinese knockoff battery, this thing. What we're trying to do is gain just like an inch or two right here for the radiator. Can you get the saws all wrapping? Yeah. That'll give us just a little bit of room there, won't it? Yeah. All right, I need to get this bracket out of the way because it's wrapped right away. As for our factory coolant reservoir, we're not using. Oh, you gonna do it? Where? Try to get it. Wait. Yeah. Wait, we can unbolt it. Let's just fold it. Okay. <laughs> false alarm, false alarm. No, saw's all needed. Hey, this back one, I don't think we're gonna be able to take the bottom bolt out. Why? Wow. The steering shaft's in the way. Oh. They really put that one in a bad spot, didn't they? Look how tight that is in there. It's like right up against the steering shaft, which goes down into the air somewhere. I guess the steering box is right there. Can you believe I sent a picture of this to Puddin' with the LS and he wanted to buy it again? Did he say you wanted to buy it? Every time, every time I send him a picture, you can't send him a picture because he just wants to buy it. I told him it ain't for sale. You couldn't talk Tosh out of it for nothing. No, I'm be driving her. <laughs> He'll drive it to Oklahoma. Marge, what are you doing? What are you doing? You don't need no mirrors on it. Yes, I do. I Those are enormous. So cool. What's with so you and big mirrors? You love big mirrors, don't you? Big yeah, we'll have to get some new mirrors for your brackets. Yeah, I think you can get that like truck stops and stuff. Here go down go. to the Let's Flying J. Let's go Flying J. This radiator here we actually got at the Ford Fest swap meet. And what is it, two inches narrower than that one, Ralphie? Is that right? One or two. So it makes it a little bit easier to fit in there. I think we're probably gonna need something this size. You just stopped my lift, man. That was in, Sorry, my, bro. I was in my set. Sorry. It's getting it going. Will it fit now? Nope. Please, you gotta be positive. Absolutely. Look at that. It's perfect. Perfect fit now. I think I gave like 40 or 50 bucks for it. We'll probably just have to adapt the sizes though. That's Chevrolet and this is Ford, so it probably has different diameter hoses, I bet money. The fact that this hose is actually too long <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> we probably won't be using anything off this except for maybe the ends or something. I think we're gonna have to build like metal pots. Oh, okay. Can... I've seen them do it in copper, but I don't really have a way to do anything copper. in copper. Well, this one's stripped out. That's factory. Well, we probably have to make some. We really need something that'll go over and like, cause and... It, remember that radiator had like a, a stud pin that Here, stuck here's up. Here's how you do it. Get you a long bolt. I am the Get smartest kid on Get out of here. What? We're, I'm not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. It's gonna end up poking a hole in your radiator. Yeah. Yeah, we just need something that's like L shaped once again. And we can put some big, huge fan on it. Yeah, that'd be good till it pokes a hole through your core, rubbing against it. <laughs> Look, so it ain't going nowhere, is it? No. Oh, Look, man. see? We'll call that the oh. oh, yeah. We'll call that a temporary mount. How about that? Let's measure our inlets and outlets on our radiator and see if they're the same or not. Usually Ford's and Chevy's are different on them. It's like an inch and three eighths on that one. And the one down here, inch and a half, maybe inch and nine sixteenths. That's definitely gonna be smaller than what that radiator is. But if we're making all our own lines, it probably doesn't matter. That's the inch and a half. So that is the same size as the lower hose. So what if we went straight from there to there and then the other one went down to this big one? That way we don't have to adapt to one side. This one down here is an inch and seven eighths. And what did I say that one was? An inch and three eighths? That's just two eighths, Marge. Yeah, I'm Quarter of an inch. Four sixteenths. Eight thirty seconds. Sixteen sixty fourths. Wait, what are we doing? Thirty two one hundred and eights. What about 128? You were a stop out your head. Yeah. We need to have some sort of rubber cushion. You don't want this rubbing against the metal, you know? Yeah. But if we had something that was about six inches at least, it could go down and over and hold it like that. We need something to for it to sit in either like this or at least something to hold it from sliding back. Remember the gremlin, how it <laughs> slid back? Yeah. Um, I think I may have a metal pot that might work for this hose. Let me go find out. That? Yeah. I was envisioning something wider. That might could work oh, right yeah. there. That's a good one. That's aluminum. Aluminum? It's gotta be wider than that. Right here. 
No, it's gonna be. It's gonna be like. It's gonna be like six inches, inches that, that way. Yeah. That looks like a good piece to sit the radiator in. This, yeah. Oh yeah. That is a practice frame reel from an iCar class. That razor could probably sit right in that and be perfect. Wall. This could be perfect. We could put it in the metal brake. And that could be our radiator mount. That was the back seat for the Starlet, and Armor it was yeah. part of the Falcon floor before I replaced yeah. it. <laughs> Let's what? go with that. Oh, what about this? Are we gonna bend this? No, part? we're not using the whole thing. We're gonna cut it, and then we'll put the metal brake. Yeah, I just use this. So that's inch and three quarter. That's probably not long enough, is it? Is that flexi hose? Yeah, yeah, it's made for that. It's a radiator hose that you can bend any way you want to. I don't know if that's long enough. We can take it and try it. That's perfect. Yeah, that'll fit nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that can hold it at the bottom for sure. Right. Let's cut it straight across there. Well, you got it. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. My things are getting better. Do we want this thing to be cool or fancy? Cool. cool or fancy? Cool, for sure. This one's stripped out, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we might just drill new holes, honestly. And just put a bolt through? Yeah, put a bolt and a nut, yeah. I don't know how far over to break this until we get the radiator actually in there. I was drilling, didn't know it, but there was an existing hole right underneath it. Oh, that's good. So once I got through this layer, it just fell, and I'm like, what is wrong with that? So that just happens to be exactly where I need to be. What about on the other side? Yeah, we got one on the other side, too. I just gotta line it up. I need a washer on the back side because the hole's a little big. Okay, so that can go right there. We're just gonna have to put some rubber in there at some point. So it probably needs to sit about right there, Ralph. Yeah, just past that edge there. Is that about right? Yeah. Ish. That looks great. She's too busy making a zip top all over here. What are you doing? No, 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 you're ruining them. <laughs> I, yeah, I tell you, every time I do it, it gets mad at me. It's like one zip tie out of like the gazillion we have. Yeah, how about but, you buy one they're zip so top? Fun to, they're so fun to do this with. Things people do that don't buy things for themselves. <laughs> Can we hold it down? Oh no. We're going to clamp it, aren't we? Yeah. Let's clamp it to the table. Hold on. We need like a super solid workbench. We're going to have to build one at some point. Ellie's found the glove. <laughs> you silly. Scooty, show me your haircut. Yeah, I him a peeled onion. A peeled onion. That's what he looks like. That is pretty true. Isn't that a C clamp? It is. I've heard that before. Will In the forums. I feel like it's gonna break off the table at any moment now. That's pretty thick stuff. Yeah, hold up on them. Yeah. Ready? Come on. You're lifting the table on it. Ah, right there. We're just eyeball it in the middle. Probably about there, Ralphie. Go for it. Good thing the radiator wasn't in there. Why don't you go ahead and drill? That should give us just enough room to put like a rubber insulator on there of some sort and hold that in. Hey, I think I think that's some of our best work. Absolutely. I can't believe how good that radiator fits this vehicle. I know, it's like it was made for it. It literally was made for it. I'm pretty sure there's some masses in there. Oh, get them. Put them in the truck, yeah. He's then got in there. Oh, he's already been in there? <laughs> yeah. He got in there and he's he taking it out. He is a mice hunting. Get him. Get him. Where's he at? Huh? My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He's going to get me. Oh. He's a vicious killer. <laughs> get your mice. Get your mice. Oh, there he is. No, don't jump off that. <laughs> Ooh, oh, he's right here. <laughs> That can fit on the thermostat. I think that'll make it up to the radiator now. Oh yeah. So that fits perfect. That turns it away from the frame rail. And we can go up there with it. This thing will hold its shape. If you bend it. And do like that right there. I've probably had this for like 
15 years. The same guy I got the engine from gave it to me. It was a big piece. I've just used pieces off of it over the years. You really need to shorten it. Oh, you never know when you might need a little extra on the side of the road. <laughs> so that can go there. Can it go to work? Yep. So now we just got to do something different with that upper one. I'm probably not gonna use that water pump if there's another option. See how it goes straight up? I need to look at that, what the other LS water pump options are. Cause if we got something that comes straight out, like towards the front, that would be way better for us. So I probably need to look into the water pumps before I do anything with that one. It's very heavy and that ends sharp. I might know a problem already. Maybe the center is Ooh, yeah. I'm running straight into the cross member. But we're taking that out. Yeah, cross member. Okay. Well, let's unbolt the cross member out of the way. I'm just glad those don't have a nut on the back side you gotta get to. Truck falls in half. Think you can get yours? Yeah. It's probably like a darn 40 pound cross member. It looks so thick. Hey, just let her fly. Let her fly. Let's cry. cry. <laughs> <laughs> this time. Work with me. Oh, this is gunked up. Right, grab it. Can we lower it down? Oh my. I'm gonna give her a donkey. Right, here you go. I'm gonna push it. Hey. There you go. Okay. All the room now. Put all the gunk in it. Ew. It's black. Ew. It's black. There you go. It fits. Your fits? It's like touching your motor mount while the heat shield is, but it's good. I'm hitting the frame rail with mine. Look, mine's perfect. Like, couldn't be better. Okay, let me come look at your side. Mine hits the frame right here with the stud. Yeah, yours is perfect. Literally perfect. Well, maybe with some trimming, we can make it work on the other side, unless we're gonna go to headers. You can go to that soon as I You would definitely have a performance gain to run long tube headers. <laughs> From Metro Mike. So I probably need something about six inches that's shaped like this, because this is only about four and a quarter. I think this can work fine for our cross member. I think that'll be good. I guess I'm gonna have to go to town and figure that out. It's probably gonna have to be tomorrow because they're already closed today, unfortunately. <laughs> Miss Piggy's outside now in her own house. How you doing, Maple? Having a fence between me and her is the best option, really. Show them your house. Yeah, you like it? She's not quite big enough yet to go in the field. Stay in there, don't bite me. Well, it's the next morning. Ralphie had a brace face appointment. Hit him with it, Ralph. So we're gonna go to the metal place, see if we can get the stuff in this cross member. Woo! Man, I always love coming to places like this. They ought to have something. Look how thick that is. What is that even for? I wonder how heavy it is. It's super heavy. All right, let's go in here and see what they got. Now, this is big. Yeah. So we went around and got a bunch of different cut off pieces and we're gonna buy them all. So hopefully we have enough metal for the next time. Right, Ralphie? Yeah. Getting a delivery, huh? Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. It was like $36 for all this. You would have paid that for this piece at like a tractor supplier or Lowe's. That's why I always come to a big place. Let's get home and get this built. Look at all the opportunities out here. Yeah. I love this stuff. I, I always love going to scrap yards and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, cool stuff. Me and Ralphie didn't measure our transmission cross member. Mm. And we thought this was the same width, so it's gonna be a little bit wider <laughs> than what we intended. Not that funny, Lord. It's pretty it's, funny. But we got a brand new rubber mount from O'Reilly, six bucks. That's awesome. How do they make that two. for six? I don't know. I couldn't make it for six. So that guy is gonna go in there once we drill a hole. Then these guys are gonna go on the sides, what my plan is. Will that work, Marge? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, I'm gonna bolt this to the transmission. A 916th and extension and a 3H rack. Come back with me. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna do something. Quit. <sighs> That's a good one, Ralph. What? Looks like a perfect fit, Marge. Good. I think we're gonna have to drop our fuel tank down. Wow. Which we probably should have done that a while ago anyway. Because this plate is probably gonna have to go on the outside of the frame rail now, the way we're doing it. 
Oh, God. Alright, this thing's coming down. Oh, God. Come on. Alright, there you go, Ralphie. The straps are loose. It does not look like a normal gas tank, does it? I love the shape of it. It's got like arms up here. This would be a great chance to clean it out before we put it back in, huh? Stuff. We got lines on top. I see a fuel gauge wire. Woo! And it looks like it's hard lined in with metal. Maybe it's a five eighths or something. Five eighths. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it. <sighs> this has a metal line with compression fitting for the fuel supply. That's funny. You don't usually see that, especially on something from the 70s. I would expect that from something much older. I don't think they changed the design of these from like the 50s or something, you know? Yeah. Oh, there's that. Oh, we got, oh, we got wires, we got wires. What in the world? There you go, there's your gas tank. <laughs> what? Oh, that's a lot of gas. Yeah, that's a lot of gas. Yeah, that's a lot of gas. Yeah, that's a lot of gas. I don't look like it's got no holes in it, though. Oh, it looks pretty solid. I'm trying to keep it like levelish. It's well, like six. Six inches? So that's. Level. I was thinking that was what we were gonna need. So we gotta have enough space to do that and bolt it or weld it to the frame. Okay, so that's probably like eight. Yeah, that would probably be enough. So let's cut two eight foot strips of that four inch wide metal. That should be good. About there. Yeah. The total width of our frame rail is 34 and several eighths. So I think I'm going to cut the cross member to that width, that should be exactly where it's at once these plates are on the outside of the frame. Dad said Ooh. measure once and cut her. That's not what your dad says. Right there is where the stud is for the transmission mount, guys. Figure out the center of this and we'll drill a hole. So that's two and a half inches. So right there is where our stud for our transmission mount will be. That'll make it a lot easier to mock this up because you know, you can actually put it at the height it's supposed to be at. You put your leg back. Come on. You got to go. No, you yeah. didn't have to call trust. <laughs> So we're gonna keep the small hole here, which is the side the mount's gonna sit on. But on the other side, we need to be able to put like a washer, a nut, and a socket through here. So I'm going to cut this out bigger. I was gonna drill it out bigger and then figured out every drill that I have that's that big is wore out. So let's try it with the jiggle saw. Is that good enough? Yeah. yeah. Surely. Surely? Surely. Shirley. Shirley? Shirley. 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 That's going to take forever to edit. <laughs> that. Oh, right I there. get it now. And now we can put the nut in through here. I don't know hold what. Up. I don't know what Roger is cutting that a square in it for. <laughs> yeah, you got to have access. <laughs> I see now. And that'll hold that up while I'm <laughs> making all this. So with this rubber mount, if our chassis flex is wall. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it won't snap our case or anything. What the word on the street is, at least. Oh, yeah. Is there sometimes welder going to work? Maybe for short bursts. So my idea is I'm going to weld this on here. And I'm going to drill two holes in this and the frame. We'll bolt it to the frame. And that way, I think that'll give us the strongest possible outcome with this. be able to weld that drill some holes in the frame when we have a cross mirror. Awesome. It looks good. Thanks, Lord. This is really thick metal, so you don't have to worry about melting through. Okay. So we just want to keep it hot. You're going to go back and forth like little half moon shapes. Okay. okay. And you can go right over my welds to kind of help them go melt in better. 
Yeah, what makes this world color? Nobody needs gloves. Yeah, I do. She don't want those cow's hands, bro. Look at them. Tell me, this water. Not bad at cows. Make dishwater hands no more, are they? Don't need my hands no more. Right, don't look, guys. Right, so start at the very. Right. Your finger. Did you just start well? No, you, I, I, you weren't I, even I, there I yet. Couldn't, I couldn't feel it, and then I just. Sorry, my bad. Right. How's your finger? Okay, I'm good. This is like the distance you need to be up front, away from it the whole time. Okay, I'll kind of help you a little bit. The first, go ahead, pull the trigger. Ready? Good. Now watch. <laughs> hold it down and watch the weld. I'm gonna help you. Keep looking right into the weld part. Okay. Right, well, right. That's pretty good. You're going a little wide with your swoopies. Oh, but good. it'll hold. Let's see the other side. Good job, Law. She, she needs to practice it. So talk about that distance. Go. You got to keep moving towards you the whole time because oh. you're kind of staying still and going back and forth. So okay. it'll hold, but. You were just not moving towards you quick enough. That makes sense. I'll be there. Oh my wow, Kay. What did you do? <laughs> what did you push on super hard? <laughs> She's the voices of this time. Wow, you can't break everything I give you. Oh, she broke her. Okay. Wow. Come here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lucky that they didn't come back and get me, but you need your safety. Also, I, I felt it break away, and I'm like, oh, I'm already through it. <laughs> oh, you went through it. <laughs> it's a small drill, but you see how it flexes. So you don't put a ton of pressure on a small drill bit. You got it? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. You can do that with a big drill bit, but not a small one. Hey, look. Easy, your turn. Hey, wait, where's your safety glasses? Rafi, you better pack up. She done broke one. Oh, well, that's flexing. Okay. I don't know if you can too long to crack open again. Push a little bit. Oh, there you go. Okay. I'll see you. Come on. I think we have to get the only good drill bit. Oh, it's no good. Ah! Press fit, isn't it? That's a good thing. That's maybe my best cross member I've ever made. You it's know? looking good. Got a lot of work in it. Now I just gotta drill four more holes through this fatty frame. Oh my god! Thank the Lord we found one good drill bit <laughs> that was the right size. So this is all bolted in now. We should be able to drop this jack. Look at that. Awesome. And that's a good solid yeah. piece right there. I'm proud of that one. <laughs> and she's LS powered now. Oh, hey. oh. Right. No more ratchet straps to hold it in or anything that's actually in there. I'm happy with it. I'm happy how it's turned out. Yeah, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm excited. really very excited. I'm really excited about it. It's... Like, I want to see how, how it drives with an engine this powerful. Like, I guess that's where we're going to finish it off for tonight. We spent a bunch of time making that today and getting the stuff for it. I really like how it's turned out. Yeah. It's just a few steps away from being really fun. You tired, Mom? Yeah, I'm tired. Sorry. <laughs> Mom's yawning in the background. <laughs> Come on, little kitties. Get in my van. I've got candy. If I do, we gotta get these seats bolted down. They're just sitting in here and they only have legs on one side for whatever reason. Yeah. Bust things, Bust I guess. Things. Crack her open there, squeeze. Oh, I'm right in the firing way here, guys. If you're wondering why we're in different clothes, we tried to wait for the weather to clear because as soon as we got done what we're doing the other day, a big storm front came in. They actually got out of school for the day because of it. We waited a whole day and came back out here. And it's still, even though the rain stopped, it's so windy outside, we're going to have to finish it inside here. Super windy. So, at least y'all did get to see Rocky for a little bit, you and know. pouring out for your homies. 
Yeah, exactly. Super excited about this. I'm really excited about the modifications we've done with the LS swap and especially moving it way back. I can't wait. I've actually already ordered some parts for it last night, so hopefully we'll have parts for this thing soon. Really trying to focus on doing more builds this year. We got I a lot hate, to build. We do have a lot to build, and I hate having cars sitting around that we're not doing nothing to. YouTube kind of favors me buying cars all the time as far as getting views, but I'd rather build the ones we have because I want to get these cars to where we can actually use them, you know, get a few cars knocked out before we buy any more. Hopefully. I say that and I'll probably buy something tomorrow. I know I'm in a marketplace this morning already. You can't get on there anymore. It's just not good. She sent me something this morning. There's a whole field full of cars for sale. Yep. Can you hear the wind whipping out there, guys? Uh, that's rain. Is it rain again? Uh, that's all it's do. done. This thing ought to be pretty spicy with a cammed up six liter in it. Hopefully with our new weight distribution, she ought to handle a little better, stop a little better, all those things. It's gonna be awesome. It is. We gotta get some front seats figured out. Yeah. Seems like that's all we've done lately, trying to figure out front seats. Seats, seats, seats. I need to order some front seats for it for sure. I'm gonna get on there when we get back in the house. We appreciate you guys watching the channel. You can buy our merch at thesleeperdude.com. We got some new stuff on there. Check it out. We're trying to keep everything in stock. We really appreciate all your support there. You can check out our second channel app. Sleeper 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 hey, I thought you were the fast one on the reaction time. I, I okay, I heard everyone say it that I was like, I'm sweet to look good. Okay. I don't know why. You can check out our third channel app. Sleeper Dude Armed. Armed. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Dude 88 yeah, I really like these LS swaps. I know people have been doing them for a while now. When I first got into it, it was kind of a new thing. You know, there's a lot of people that don't know how to do it. So hopefully we're helping somebody out. I really like the six liters, 6.2s, the big boy motors. Yeah, you can tell a difference between a 4.8 and a 6.0 or a 6.2. They definitely have some grunt to them. They're basically big block power in a small block size. They may be lacking a little bit on torque, but it's not a lot. Um, they're pretty rowdy. And just think of all the Sleeper Dude merch you can take down oh, to the post yeah. office in this I'm thing. I'm gonna pack this thing cool. It's really weird driving it where I can drive. Yeah, um, it'll take some practice for me. Yeah, the couple times I drove it, it's like, it's hard to stay in your lane. You can't hardly see the line over there, how close you yeah. are to the other people. Uh, and the way you drive it, you probably don't even need to drive this. <laughs> Cause you already go, drive like already on the line. Yeah, you're Maybe always gonna have to go around hey, me. Double yellow's like the center of the van cause she <laughs> thinks she's in the right spot. <laughs> I can imagine. I can just see it now. I can imagine. But drink your RC Colas, eat your Vainas. It's the American thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, we appreciate everybody that watched our channel. Thank you to all the members. Thank you to everybody that does super thanks. Everybody that subscribes and likes the videos. So members is $5 a month and you get priority status on getting your comments answered. It basically highlights your comments for me and so they pop up first for me. You also get sneak peeks of whatever where you're doing that day, the exact day, because there's a little bit of time between the time we film and the time we edit and get it out. Subscribing is absolutely free. You just get notifications when we put out a video. And obviously liking and commenting just helps boost our videos and get it out to more people. So we appreciate everybody does all that. We're very blessed with our fan base for sure. We're gonna try to get on Wawa's Beetle soon. Uh, Ralphie has a project vehicle we're gonna try to get on soon as well. I need to get back on the motorhome, figure out about the oil leak. That thing is scaring me to death. I feel like I'm gonna tear it all down and not figure out what's wrong with it or something, you know, and put it all back together. But I have been working on it a little bit. I, I, it had a miss for a little bit and I figured out that we had left a rocker loose. Then it was acting like it was running out of fuel because it was out of fuel. So I put fuel in it and that fixed that problem. Wow. It runs and drives great. It just uh, has an oil leak. So that's my fault. Thank you to everybody that watched our channel. We'll see you in the next one.